In the last video, we proposed this question that involved a black box. So that's a box that you can send inputs to, find the outputs of, and you don't get to look inside the box. You don't know what function is actually being implemented. You give it x, it produces f of x, and that's all. If you want to know what the function is, you have to put in all the values, all the potential input values of x, and find out at the output what those do, enumerate all the possibilities, then you have f. So to find out exactly what f is, you need to input all possible input bit strings. If I only want to know what the structure of f is in terms of some different possibilities, so if I want to know whether f produces any ones as output, then I just need to put input values in until I see a one, and then I know, yes, that this black box can produce ones. In the last video, we, we showed two different kinds of functions, balanced and constant functions. And let's just have a little reminder for the two-bit example. So the inputs can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. And we had the all zero function. That's a constant function. And the all the last one was the all one function, and that's another constant function, because the input doesn't change, regard or the output doesn't change regardless of the input. And then we had some we had six balanced functions. Okay, um, let me make sure I get the numbers correct. So we had f3, f5, f6, these are from the last video, and f, f12 were the balanced functions. And the rest of the functions were neither constant nor balanced. So f3 was 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So these are the functions that have the same number of zeros and ones for their outputs. Uh, these ones. And these two are constant. The question is, how many inputs do I need to check before I know for certain whether an unknown function, one of these possibilities, is constant or balanced? When I determine that number, I found the query complexity of the problem of determining whether a function is constant or balanced. So uh, many, there's many different problems you can pose regarding uh, asking questions of, of Boolean functions, and each of them will have their own query complexity. Well, sometimes if you could develop some sort of problem where it's too difficult to determine what the query complexity is. And these are questions for uh, computer scientists. For this particular problem, we can actually determine what the query complexity is. And we can do this by an example. So let's suppose that we query our black box with zero, zero. So that is, we have our black box and we ask, what is f of zero, zero? And let's suppose, okay, we're just supposing here, let's suppose that it's zero. And if we look at this, the function, the input on zero, zero here, can be either zero or one, and there's an equal number of zeros and ones amongst these possibilities. So zero and one are equally likely without loss of generality. Let's assume that it's zero. What does this tell us? It certainly tells us that it is not F15, it is not F9, it is not F10, it is not F12. It's one of these other four possibilities. However, there is a constant function in that set of possibilities and a balanced function in that set of possibilities. So with this answer, we are not able to determine whether the unknown function is constant or balanced. 
so we need another query. Now you might say, well, maybe there's a, a correct input to check. Uh, given that I know that F00 is zero, maybe I should check F11 or F10. But in fact, you can look at the possibilities. So if we count the numbers of zeros and ones in each row, we find that they're the same and zero is equally likely to one at the output no matter what the input is. So again, without loss of generality, it doesn't really matter which input we check. So let's check zero one. And let's say that zero one was one. Then we'd be done. Because the one possibility is that it's the all zero function and the other one is it's one of the other balance functions. So if we find that f as zero zero is zero, f as zero one is one, we know that it's not a constant function, so it must be a balance function. We're done. All right, what if it's zero? Then we're still not done. If it's zero, we've eliminated f5 and f6. Remember that f15, F9, F10, F12 have already been eliminated. Now F, uh, F5 and F6 are also eliminated because they have one at the output of zero one. That means we're left with F3 and F0. And we see that one of them is constant and one of them is balanced, so we're still not done. Okay. So now we have to check finally the last one. And you'll notice that for F0 and F3, there are different possibilities for the output, in which case uh, we can determine which function it is. And again, if F10 is zero, then so far we've seen zero, zero, zero in our, um, in our example. And we know then that we have this F0 function, which is constant, F3, has zero, zero, one. So we know that it's not that option. Now, the, using this example, we want to generalize and come up with a simple argument for how many queries we need for an n bit input. If there are n bits, then there are still two constant functions. And the balance functions have an equal number of zeros and ones. And in the worst case, so in the best case, we query the function once, we get one or zero, and on the second query, we get the opposite value, therefore eliminating both constant functions, and we know that it's balanced. So best case scenario, we only need two queries. What's the worst case scenario? So when the way that the question is posed is, is how many queries do we need before we are certain that it's a constant or balanced function, regardless of what, which function it actually is. So this kind of question is sometimes called the worst case analysis. So in the worst case, what will happen is that we've chosen, uh, it happens to be the one function that has a constant number, a, a constant output on all of the inputs that you've tried so far, thereby not eliminating one of the constant functions and still showing you that it's possible to be a balanced function. So how many inputs can this occur for? How, how many times can I query a balanced function and still get the same answer? Well, the definition of a balanced function is that it has the same number of zeros and ones, that means half of the inputs are zero, half of the inputs are one. And that means that I could potentially have picked the half of the inputs that all have the same output, zero, one. But as soon as I have seen half of the inputs, then for a balance function, I know that the next query will give me the opposite answer. And the rest of the queries will obviously give the opposite answer as well, but I only need that one to rule out a constant function. So in the worst case, 
we need uh, half of the total number of queries. Okay, so the total number of queries for an n bit function is 2 to the n total inputs is 2 to the n. So the number of queries that I need is 2 to the n. I only need half of them, so 2 to the n divided by 2. And then I need to query it once more. So another way to write this is 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1. Classically, I need this many queries in order to be certain that the function is constant or balanced. In the next video, we'll ask, well, first of all, you know, there must be some quantum, some notion of a quantum query, otherwise I wouldn't have uh, introduced this problem. But what exactly does it mean to query a function quantumly? And what is the quantum query complexity of this problem?